cargo and live up. Hello everybody and welcome back to our Kids Planning live stream. We're back with Devin for a rematch of Siege 6. Six Siege, which one is it? Because I've said it back and forth. Six Siege, the so board game. We're back for Six Siege, the board game, which we played a week ago and Devin beat me with a giant asterisk because <laughs> he didn't tell me that there was a reroll token when he taught me the game. But he used the reroll token I mean, later in the game. There's so. there's quibbles about how that went down, but um, yeah, no, we're here for a rematch. It's, we also misunderstood quite a few important rules, just because it is a very complex game. There's a lot going on, so there were some things that just for the sake of the stream and not stopping and and checking rules all the time. We and Daniel suggested not because he lost, but because of the the rules that we should redo it. Right? It, it yes. wasn't because you lost. No. It was just because, you know, a healthy, healthy, healthy competition. Rematch. Yes. Yeah. So we're here and we've got general setup done of bomb mode on the consulate. And we last time we did uh, rapid deployment, which is where they give you preset scenarios of where defenders and attackers are going to be on the map. But this time we've got the general setup done, but we're going to do regular deployment, which means... Uh, Daniel, who's now taking over the defenders, and me, who's playing as the attackers, are going to be actually physically manipulating and putting both the defender gadgets and the operators themselves on the board to kind of come up with our own personal strategies of who we're going to put where. So if you're here for the first time, Six Siege, the board game, is an adaptation of the Ubisoft popular video game. It's a tactical shooter online multiplayer. It's really big. It's been around since, I think, like December 2015. Um, and it's just been continually iterating and growing, and now they've got a board game where Mythic Games has collaborated with um, Ubisoft to create this um, IP, and so they have condensed the five-player versus five-player into a 1v1 or a 2v2 board game, kind of like a tactical skirmish game um, where it's all condensed in an inner environment where it's typically one floor with a hidden second floor or upper floor, and then there are multiple different modes that you can do. You can do control, you can do hostage, and each of those have their own rules. And we're doing classic bomb, which is the most well-known mode that you can play in the game, and it's the one that is most frequently played or really only played in the ranked or unranked competitive online for the video game. So... One of us is going to be the defenders, one of us is going to be the attackers, and we're going to be going head-to-head -head as he tries to stall for time or kill all of my um, operators, and I try to defuse the active bombs that are inside the building or kill all of his operators. So that's kind of the goal. It's a, uh, you know, inside skirmish shooter with a lot of tactical nuance with each of the operators kind of bringing their own thing to it. We are working with a prototype. So the Kickstarter is live right now. It's got like eight days left and um, it's already funded. It's like absolutely smashed it. I think it's over 600,000 and over 5,000 or 600,000 funded, 5,000 backers. So it's doing really, really well, and you can see all of the content on there. This is a prototype, though, that the base box has got 10 defenders, 10 operators, and two maps, one on each side of the board. This has only got one board, the consulate, and it's got six operators of each side, of which we will be using five. So does that pretty much cover kind of where we were and where we're going? I think so. Okay, so what we have left to do, like I said, we did the general setup to do rapid deployment now. I've picked my five operators. I got rid of the one I didn't want. 
Daniel is going to pick his five operators. He's going to get rid of one that he does not want to use. And then we're going to select our tactical inventory that we're going to be bringing into the game. Okay, I'm going to... Let me get rid of Bandit. Okay, so you get rid of Bandit. You won't need the shock wires, okay. which are these guys. And so um, you've got those five. Yes. And we've picked our operators. And so now um, we are going to be... Uh, you've got your reroll token, Overwatch tokens. Uh, you can reroll, by the way. I can. You can um, reroll once and again. <laughs> Very important. The so thing no. what we're going to do now is we're each going to take five cubes, uh, five of these charge cubes, and we are going to select secretly the um, what we're going to be bringing. I already get drones here, and um, I've already oh, grabbed the tactical inventory of what I have. Uh, we are switching over. To, the, to overhead the overhead camera now. You told me to share stuff, and then you're over here sharing stuff, so I'm double sharing stuff. That's well, I share it on my <laughs> personal, and then on Twitter. So. And on the quack Oh, that was earlier today. Oh, okay. So, Daniel's got his five that he wants. Each operator, some of them, depending on what they bring into the game, has their own charge cubes needed for the tactical inventory or tactical gadgets that they can use, but we will get five basic ones to disperse amongst our kind of basic inventory that e any operator can use regardless of what their actions or style of play is. So, we the, now secretly pick this. The five that we're going to use? The five that you're going to use here. Okay, secretly right next to each other? Secretly right next to each other. So, his is a little bit different. He's got two different types of grenades, or one type of grenade and one nitro cell. Thank and then he's got bulletproof cameras and deployable shields. So as soon as he puts them down, if he chooses any of those, he'll grab those cubes off and immediately get these uh, tokens that you use to put on the board. And that he'll use that during his own setup. So uh, are you ready uh, to secretly go? I'm moving to make sure we can see board game Gran is on. Hey, how's it going? I think she is in Australia. So if I remember right from our last live stream, I'm assuming you are on your lunch right now. <laughs> because that's when she watched Allison and I play Trails, which when she was was eating lunch. Hey, nice to meet you, you board game Grand. You might hear Allison chime in. She's she's back on the couch. We do have a social media assistant this time. <laughs> yeah, but I'm making thumbnails and doodling. So. so I am also a big fan of the video game. I, I, I looked today on my... Uh, Rainbow Six Tracker online and was slightly embarrassed to find out that I have played this game on the video game for over 750 hours. Ooh. So, maybe a little bit excessive. Uh, Alright, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Boop. Okay. Alright. So no, we don't look at these. No, you, you <laughs> we can look at them. So you're not bringing any deployable shields, but you're going to bring one bulletproof camera. So you will get this bulletproof camera. Now I'll this, this for me one to deploy in setup. In setup. Yeah. So you'll get castles, um, armor panels. You'll get uh, mutes, signal disruptors, and then you're going to get that bulletproof camera to do during setup. And then I don't know where the other one went. Maybe I already grabbed it. Uh, yep, I already grabbed it. So yeah. we don't need those anymore. Okay, so now we've uh, gotten our charge cubes and we've gotten kind of general setup down. We're ready to go to deployment now. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, I have played a lot of Rainbow Six, just not... And I may have played Six Siege a couple times, but I played... What was the, the other Ubisoft or Ubisoft? The, it was the other really popular one that I'm just blanking on the name. Where you were the one guy... Assassin's Creed? No, not Assassin's Creed. That was the other... Oh, other Splinter Cell. Splinter, Splinter Cell, Cell. yes. Splinter yeah. Cell. We played a lot of Splinter Cell. Agent Zero, or Sam Fisher, is actually the Splinter Cell guy. And he's in this campaign. Okay. I mean, he's on the Kickstarter campaign. But, um, yeah. So, all right. So now we're moving to deployment phase. We've set up... Uh, we will probably not fully use this guy... Um, just simply because we're going to be talking to you guys, talking to each other, yeah. discussing the game. And so, I wish, I'm, typically when we're playing with an overhead, we would lay stuff on its side, but that would make the board super cluttered to lay barriers and things like that on its side. So just know, and you can kind of see just what are the disadvantages to the amount of stuff here. You can obviously see all the tables, but 
the barriers in the doorways, cameras, things like that. We'll try to point those out as we interact with them. Yeah. Just, just so you can see where they are and how that works. Okay, so we're moving to deployment now. So we've set it up so player one has time remaining in order to set up deployment. So you now have to decide where you want your hidden operator tokens, yep. uh, of which, again, if you're new to seeing this, there are two of each of these. Now, who did I take? I took out bandits. You so took I out bandits. So you don't need those. So these represent the fact that the attacker does not actually know where the defender is until they get them in line of sight or find them via a camera. So one of them is a decoy and one of them is the actual operator. So Daniel will use that to his advantage when picking mm -hmm. where to go and he can always look at any time to see where they are. So he's going to figure out where they go and also have set up for, um, you can take... Do, do, do. Which do we get the minis? Do you have? No, we did. I've got the minis. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's a lot going on, but it picks up really, like there's obviously there's a lot of little rules. There's going to be rules checks the first few times you play, but it's very logical. It It is, uh, man, I played with Jared last night and he picked it up. I mean, I was supposed to play with Allison and Jared was watching. No, he totally took over. Yeah, and then he just took over and started making decisions. So it, it does play very logically. It's really I'm almost surprising how... Smoothly how it smoothly it plays, even our first play, even though we got a few things wrong, just how smoothly it played with as much as going on. All right, so you've got your operators, which you he won't actually put his miniatures on the board yet because we don't know where they are. Wink, wink. Um, so he has to decide where he wants his hidden operator tokens, where he wants Overwatch, where he wants his starting gadgets. Yep. And all of the, you probably can't see, that, see it that close, but like, so the... The operators show a setup if they have a special setup thing. So I'm just going to go down the setup first. So I can place up to three armor panels on free door locations or as replacements for barricaded doors and windows. So these are the armor first, panels. First, though, first, do you want to reorient any of the five starting doors, barbed wire, or cameras? Because... Uh, this is the general setup, but the defender is allowed to reorient up to five of the obstacles or objects in there. But you cannot um, say, like, I can't change the position of the bombs. Those are mission-specific items. Yes. Uh, no, it's not cooperative team play. It's player versus player. It's it's a one. It's a head-to-head -head game. She says that. It's, she says, so it's PvP. Yes, yeah, she's asking. Yeah, okay. um, and it does have a four-player version, which I can only imagine would be be really susceptible to quarterbacking unless you just had very segmented like and it the the four player i didn't see anything about that in the rules so i think that is in the the full version of the game but it does mention it's for two to four players but the four player would have to be two teams of two and just yeah i'm not entirely sure how the 2v2 is going yeah. to look i imagine they're going to reveal more of that in the future yeah. But um, it's still juicy and a lot of fun at 1v1. Yeah, it's it's a great 1v1 game. And one of those that the more you play, the more competitive it's going to get, the better it's going to get, especially with multiple maps. So, All right. You figure out where you want to be, yeah. sir. Yeah, so I have that. Ca I like that camera there. And the camera is not line of sight. It's just the entire room, correct? Um, yes. Yeah. It's no joke. <laughs> I want you. Oh. Okay. I move that. That's one. It's probably not super tactical to have my T right next to my laptop, but. <laughs> um, I like that there. I'm going to move that one to there. And the cameras, as they are now, I think the ones in the Kickstarter version are going to be acrylic with something that really makes it really clear which way they're pointing. But one side has red, one side has the picture of the camera, so they face. So this one is going like this with the picture of the camera facing, so it's covering this room. Um, I'm going to put it in there. And obviously you could only destroy it from the room that it's in. Um, yeah, I think that's all I want to move. I'm happy with the barbed wire and everything like that. Next, I go through my armor panels. 
So I can place three armor panels on free door locations or as a replacement for barricaded doors or windows. I'm going to definitely do that here. That's one. Um, do that here. That's two. And... I will put one here. Okay, so that's my three armor panels. That is castle for... Mute now. Mute, place three signal disruptors on three sections of reinforced walls, which are going to, that. if I understand correctly, that just disables drones, things like that. Yes, gadgets cannot be used, electronic gadgets cannot be used in that space unless... Uh, uh, that signal disruptor is destroyed or disabled. And the bulletproof camera, I I place that later, correct? No, you place it oh, now. Oh, I place, I place that now? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it says setup. Okay. Um, and the bulletproof camera, all the other cameras you can destroy from across the room. Is If you're in line of sight with them, you can destroy them. The bulletproof camera you have to actually get up next to and disable it. Yep. Uh, so a signal disruptor. I'm going to put one right there. I'm going to put one. There. And then I'm going to put one. Okay, so that's that. Hi, Allison. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so signal disruptor, and then these are, okay, those are my, okay. So now I place my people, and I'm not placing my actual minis, I'm placing hidden operator, hidden tokens. operator tokens. Okay. So castle, let's see. And they all start out in Overwatch, which means that they are observed. They're they're on guard. If anyone, oh, that's a door. If anyone comes within 180 degrees of their location, line of sight, they see them. So, and if you're not familiar with what Overwatch is, if you're you know looking for the first time, you're curious why that's going to be an important factor in the game. It's going to be present the whole time, and it's going to be something that Daniel and I are both very mindful of, is where the other person has Overwatch. Is in the video game, um, having the right angle, the right view, the right perspective on where a person might come in is vital because it can give you the first shot. And uh, it's a very deadly or lethal game where it doesn't take much to kill you. And that is reflected in how um, quickly you can die in this if you are not careful. Uh, so what Overwatch does is it uh, signifies the attention and the like tactical readiness and awareness of both of defenders and attackers. And in a 180 degree like view in front of wherever that Overwatch is, they have line of sight and are ready to shoot and react to anybody that comes into that field of view that is an enemy or an opponent. So having Overwatch is very important and very valuable, um, just as it is very valuable to try and approach people from behind uh, who don't have Overwatch.
Don't to see your top of your head. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can't run I know. I got it. It's a big board. So if you can see off to the side, this timer is counting down. Um, the way that this app works is you can set it to different levels of leniency or intensity, and w it will give the defender and the attacker varying amounts of time, uh, almost always giving the defender more time unless you handicap a player um, to accommodate for different player skill level or experience. But it gives the defender more time to set up because they have to create the entire puzzle or tactical mess that the attacker has to untangle and find a way through. And so theirs is a little bit more involved. Once Daniel's done, I'm just gonna be physically placing my operators on the exterior of the building, um, thinking obviously about where I want to go, but not necessarily uh, having as intense of a deployment experience. I, I, you know, I have my miniatures out on the board already, um, I don't have hidden operator tokens, and I don't have setup deployment that I have to worry about. So his timer is going to be longer, and then when he gets done, we'll switch over to my deployment, and I'll have time to decide how I want to approach whatever he's doing. Okay. I'm going to do that. And we have, these are lean standees, so... In this, my person is actually sitting right here and they're leaning into this space. The, the standee or the token represents where their head would be. So even though I'm leaning here, I still have the protection of this wall that I'm behind if that ever comes into play. Um, and then the last one. Okay, I believe that is my full deployment. Full deployment. Um, and you have some of your people leaning, some yes. of your people not leaning. So oh, what we'll do... Oh, I forgot my bulletproof camera. Uh, oh, what? Did you not put it up? Somewhere? No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, I already put the other one in the box. So yeah. Do I add yours. this or do I swap this out for an existing camera? You add it. It's, okay. it's an addition, not a subtract. Or it's not a substitution. Okay. okay. And these icons on the board right here, these are to go to the second level. Um, in the second level, you don't actually interact with, with anybody on the second level. Um, you just, the, the attackers can use the blue ones. Anyone can use the gray ones. So the attackers can use these to go up on the roof, essentially go over the building and come down somewhere else. Or they could actually go up and come down inside and come down inside the building if they if they choose to. Uh, mm -hmm. But you, if you use this, you move up, and then that is the end of your turn. Once you get on the roof, your turn ends. You can't do any more actions or come down on the same turn. Okay, so you're yep. ready? Yep, I'm ready. So we're going to switch to player two deployment. It, see, it gave him 30 minutes to do setup based off of the difficulty or complexity level that we were at. It only gives me 10 because I am, you know, responding to not as intense of a uh, situation. So I am going to just see how this goes. Um, I'm going to... I think I'm gonna go ahead and put... IQ here. Put sledge here. And he obviously has to start outside the building. He is the only one that can be outside the building. I can't, even though I'm not stirred outside the building, I'm not able to leave the building. So I can't come outside and attack his people there. Um, so, and I think I did, it's going to take quite a few games to be comfortable with the deployment and really actually making strategic decisions with that. Again, very similar to the game, to the video game, just getting comfortable with the maps, things like that. 
Um, it's just a process that you're going to have to go through playing, but it's a, uh, again, it's, this is one that I could definitely see having an ongoing, like once a week, once a month kind of mention our video we shot on it this morning. This could definitely be one that Jared and I play a couple times a month, like a Saturday morning, just ongoing, constantly rematch, keep track of, of wins and losses kind of thing. It's, it's that kind of game. <laughs> I think you're really stacking up on that side of the building <laughs> we'll see if it works <laughs> I'm not entirely sure um, so uh, I have oh I need to do overwatch so I'm going to um, put my overwatch there which doesn't really matter for you in the beginning, because I'm going to immediately move, which is going to counter... And you're the, outside the building, so I yeah. can't... I guess, can I shoot outside the building? I think you... If you might. open that window, it just says you can't go outside the building, but... Yeah, I mean, I think you can shoot through a window if yeah. you have line of sight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Where all did you post, Allison? Facebook. And Just on general pages, or did you post in any groups? I didn't put it because you posted it. All right, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to say that I'm done with my, my deployment. I think I'm happy with that. I don't have any setup for anybody. So, uh,. I'm going to push in deployment. And so it's technically time for me to start. You ready? Yes, I'm ready. So you're you go first and I can activate one to three of my five operators, and then Daniel will go, he'll activate one to three of his five operators, and then it will come back to me, and I'll operate my remaining operators, and then he'll go back to him, he'll operate possibly his remaining operators. And then it will be end of round, and we'll do upkeep, which gets rid of locate markers, stun markers, um, and possibly involves the bomb. And then we go to that phase there. So I'm going to start, and we'll see how this goes. So I've started my first round. What I'm immediately going to do is I am going to send IQ upstairs. So as soon as I move her and activate her, the Overwatch token goes away. I'm going to spend one movement point to go to this blue... Um, entry way to the upper floor, which blue ones are only ones that can be activated by the attackers. I'm going to move here. I'm going to go up to the upper floor, and because I moved up to the upper floor, I can no longer um, move or run um, this activation. Um, I'm done with movement. However, I am now on the upper floor, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate uh, IQ's ability to remove an electronics gadget from a space in a upstairs uh, permeable room. It means a room that is able to be uh, targeted from upstairs. And then I'm gonna put it back in the box. So I'm going to do that while IQ is upstairs to remove this camera from mm. um, the room. So I'm gonna shoot it through the wall. And the way that that works now, where, is- How are you doing that? I am upstairs. Um, I moved upstairs with my movement, right. and I'm using her ability that allows me to remove an electronic. I get that. Where is that upstairs? Per using that, can you? It's so. What it is is any of these rooms, or you know, like adjacent to me being upstairs. I'm not. I'm not like overwatching in an entryway space at all. Um, but I'm. I'm able to remove. It's. It's like I'm okay, upstairs on the floor. So that's what. You. That's what that icon. Yes. Yeah, so this okay. icon on the corners of these rooms mean that actions are able to be. Um, perpetrated from the upstairs. And that's an icon. It's on your. It's specifically map. IQ's ability. Okay. She's got a gadget, electronic gadget finder, kind of like on her wrist. That's her operator ability, even in the video game. So she's kind of upstairs thematically on the top floor looking around, and she can see the electrical output or energy of this camera beneath her and she's shooting with her pistol and disabling it so question with pulse that would mean if i'm upstairs 
you could, I could do that. place a locate marker. So that means when I'm upstairs, yes. I can do that. I can't. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. So enough. I just removed this camera um, from that spot. And then, so that's uh, another action. And then the next thing that I am going to do is... Um, Mr. Cheesy asked if yeah. we back the game. I think Devin, back the game. Devin backed the game. I did. I backed it at the all-in because I absolutely love Rainbow Six Siege. And to me, Daniel and I talked about this in our last game. I really do think this could be a game that if you get the same people playing it over and over again, it could be a go-to skirmish game, yes. 1v1 competitive strategy where you know maybe you do a sequence of five times he plays his defense five yeah. times I plays offense and you you know you keep track you keep score and you also on the cool thing about this timer on the app is you can set it to really fast time yeah. which means you could get to the point where you're changing not only who you're playing with but how you're playing in terms of like you have to make quick decisions and so, if you don't if you run out of time even on the setup if you dawdle and you run out of time on the setup, when that timer runs out, you're supposed to just put everything that you haven't said. It's not a, oh, do it really fast. Yeah. Like you. No, it's like you're done. Yeah. Um, um, and I will probably, we will probably back the base level, which I think is $60 for the base game. 69 69 And then there's two map packs that have two maps each or either two maps or is it two double-sided maps? It's it's one, it's an additional board double-sided, so each map pack has two total maps in okay. it. Okay, so my plan right now is to back the base game with the... Um... You're going to have to wait for a specific date. Um, it's not, the, the Kickstarter is like, this is really far in development, but they're no. still going to be tweaking things, they're still going to be changing things, and so I think Ubisoft has projected, or not Ubisoft, but Mythic Games <laughs> has projected about a 12-month wait time from when you back it and the campaign ends to when you get it. Now, given the state of the world and given just Kickstarter in general, yeah. it might be more reasonable to assume 18 months. Um, if you back it now, you'll get it. But this game has got a popular enough IP and it's already intended that part of it or some of the content will be retail available. So you could also just wait till it comes out in store, but... Um, as Kickstarter usually is, there's exclusives that yeah. you might want to look into. Uh, I think there's going to be some acrylic stuff with a Kickstarter versus just the cardboard standees, things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Devin's all in on it. I'm probably going in at the base level. We're talking about it. We're talking. Yeah, Allison's over there on the couch. I'm probably going in at the base level uh, and then doing the two map packs. I'm not nearly as invested in the video game as Devin is, so... And even when I play the video game, I'm not a go super customized stuff. So having 50 different operators is not, it isn't as big of a deal to me. So, and if we don't end up backing it, it will be purely out of not able to, not a, it's not good. It's totally worth backing for we'll me. We'll just invite Devin over and we're off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. So I have used two of my actions. I moved IQ upstairs to the uh, sec upper floor, which is where she is over here now. On the board and then I used her special action to remove a camera from inside here and then um, with my uh, final action I'm going to use uh, my only breach charge we'll see if I regret this later I'll use my only breach charge as a red level destroy action now you use but you have that was just IQ that you, have you moved someone else no I haven't moved this is her third move I thought once she went up into the... You can't move or run anymore. Okay. So she's stuck up here in terms of movement. Okay, she But she still has two more that. actions she can do. Gotcha. So she uh, destroyed the camera, and her third action is to use this breach charge and destroy this fortified entryway, which opens up a new way to come down or go up to between the floors. Okay. And so she is now done. I have used one of my possible up to three activations. Um, the next thing that I am going to do is I am going to, um, this might be a really short game <laughs> on either side. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do next is I am going to, uh, activate Ash, um, and I'm going to use her, uh, Breaching Round ability, which I have two of, and that allows me to target a space in line of sight 
ignoring a maximum of one barricade, which is this window here, and I'm going to select a space orthogonally adjacent to it. I don't really need to. Um, I wish I could get rid of that. I think I could technically get rid of that window, but um, I'm just gonna do this slower. And so I'm gonna perform an orange destroy action in both spaces, which allows me to essentially shoot a explosive breaching round through this window and hit this, and it's going to destroy this barbed wire. Um, and it could destroy up to one additional thing next to it, but there is nothing else there. Um, and so then with my second action with her, I'm going to destroy this window. And then um, after that, I am going to uh, back up here. And um, that is going to be my move for Ash. So dest destroyed that window and gotten this Overwatch back on Ash. Ash, and she is now done. And then um, the next thing that I am going to do is... Who would I want to activate? I need to see who's who. Who my real people are and who my not real people are. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'm going to... Uh, let me, real quick actually... Explore what that does. I'm going to pause this real quick, which is something that you can definitely do when you guys are looking up rules. What are you checking? Uh, drones. What can drones do? Um, as far as, can they go through walls, or do they just... Um, I believe they... I, I, I was seeing if they could drop from upper floor to lower floor, which I don't believe they can. Um, so, mm -hmm. Devin, we should get kids playing in the fort. Yes, I think that they would both like Oros for sure. This is the. I don't think they can. Yeah, no. It's it says that they can't go from. Um, it says that they can't use entryway spaces to move to the upper floor, which to me means that they probably also cannot go from the upper floor down. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo. So I think, even though I was planning on doing that, I think I'm actually going to... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Hmm. That's the that's the trouble there. Yeah, the first the first turn is consistently the hardest, and just trying to figure out. You know, once you start reacting to people, it gets a lot just easier and and more logical in what you're doing. Um, and if you're just hopping on, we've had a few more people hop on in just the last couple minutes. We're playing Six Siege, not Siege 6. I got it right. <laughs> We're playing Six Siege from Mythic Games, which is on Kickstarter now. The link is in the description for this video. It is a board game adaptation of Rainbow Six Siege, the video game. It is a fantastic adaptation. Um, yeah, so this is a rematch <laughs> we played last Wednesday. Um, Devin... Just barely squeaked out a win with a couple asterisks. You can go watch that, <laughs> that one to see. All right. Um, I think. But it is a fantastic game. It is definitely one that, whether I'm playing my copy or just going over to Devin's house a lot, it will get a lot of gameplay. Um, but it is, right. again... Is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to activate Sledge. Let's just see how we're doing this. I'm going to activate Sledge. I am going to not actually fully move. I am going to lean using his lean token, which is going to bring me right here. Um, and then, uh, Every time I say lean, I feel my friends open. This yeah. is where I lean. Me too. Uh, and as, as complex as it is, as much as there is going on, it really, 
Yeah, as as I say this in the middle of a rules check, the rules check are are pretty, and you're going to have to do them your first couple of games. But I was shocked at how smoothly it played, how logically it played, just through the first play, and then we played with Jared last night and this morning, and he's 11, and he picked it up so fast. Um, still having to check on some things, but just he picked the game up so quickly. It is, um, it's just, it's so well done. So, so um, what I'm doing is I'm leaning here, and I am now going to, uh, that took one movement point, which is part of my movement action. The next thing I'm going to do is use Sledge's uh, Breaching Hammer. And so I'm going to target an operator and or a gadget located in an orthogonally adjacent space, which... Um, which there's not one. Oh, yeah. the, the well, You can breach that. Yeah, I can breach that. But there's... You could also... And this is something I didn't realize until I reread through the rules. If, if I had someone right here, as part of that action, you could breach that and immediately shoot me... Whether I'm yep. an Overwatch or not, it yes. is a basically stun. Free so, shot, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do that and destroy... Um, uh, You're just destroying the barricade. Yeah, I'm just destroying the barricade. Which now I am an Overwatch. Is that you? That is me. And now you can shoot me. So now I am me. revealed. So where is Jaeger? Did you check if you can lean and... So yeah, that's what I was. I was looking on leaning, and um, it uh, it said that you can't move while leaning. Um, but, but can you perform say, your action while leaning? Yeah, it did not say anything about not being able to do actions. Um, now, where is where does it say when you lean? Where is the where are you actually located when you're leaning? Uh, so you're going to do line of sight to this. No, where are you actually, for, for the purpose of whether you're... Damage? No, whether you can do that. Because it said something about your head is in one spot. Yeah, so it, it's saying that the miniature represents the head and the standee represents your body. So if you shoot at me, I'm going to get the heavy protection of this wall. Right, but I'm wondering if you can breach that wall leaning over to do it or if you have to be standing in front of it because it's sledge is where is sledge target an operator and or gadget located in an orthogonally adjacent space behind a light wall or barricade which either way you could destroy the question is can you destroy diagonally um so you don't even have to use your your action for that that's a this is an orange you can destroy sledge can destroy orange just with a destroy action yeah, so I, I guess I'll just destroy it. Yeah, there's uh, no reason just, to... Just, just to... just to make sure that I'm not um, yeah. interpreting that incorrectly, I'm just going to destroy it. Uh, so I and don't so... think if you were going to target, if I was back there, I don't think you could do that from there because it says orthogonally adjacent, and if I understand the rules right, your okay. body is right there, well, then which it, you're, you're fine with that. But, but, but I could destroy... Can I destroy... A, I, I think I can destroy a, a diagonally adjacent as well, right? So I could have destroyed that without having moved or having leaned. I could have just destroyed that. Yes. You sound so confident. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, I don't... Okay, yeah. So that's a, that's a good question. The destroy action. So now here's another question is now... Destroy... Oh, wait. It's on the help, isn't it? Destroy. If it is in a if it is in a space in line in sight in line of sight. Um, so okay. So yeah, you're you're fine. You you don't have to be. Yeah, because that that's line of sight to yeah. me. So okay. So I've destroyed it, which actually simplifies everything that I was going to be doing anyways. Because now I can use a drone action, which would have told me that you were in there. Okay. And that's really all I was trying to do was just see if that was your guy or not. Okay. And so um, now, uh, I believe I have destroyed, I have uh, droned, so I only have one more action. 
So I think what I want to do is... Did you get your other Jaeger guy off the map? There we go. Um, I have one more action with him. So, uh... Well, no, you destroyed and you droned. Yeah, so I have one more action. Or movement. I have you movement can move. if I want to move. Yeah. Um... I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm just going to end right there. Now, here's a question, and I don't know that we or maybe can I should answer move this. here. You are in my 180 degree arc. So this guy, no, 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 no. This and this guy, guy is not in line of sight. No, he's not. Yeah, because line of sight is centered. If you may not be able to see it, there's tiny white dots in the middle of every every um, square. So you you do line of sight from center of the square to center of the square, not from any part to any part. Yeah. So okay, so that is. So I, I'm gonna actually, I think, because he does not have Overwatch, um, I think I'm actually just gonna move him back one because one space is not ultimately going to hurt me, um, in the long run. So I, I've activated. So we switch to player one operators. So now the defense has time for him to operate or activate one to three of his operators. Okay. okay. Are you worried? A little bit. <laughs> okay. As I try and figure out where where my people actually are. Um. Mm, mm. My bad. The whole reason of doing that was not just to find you. It was also that you are now located. Until so, I... Once I move, am I still located? You are located till the end of the round. End of, okay. Okay. Um, well, that's frustrating. <laughs> uh, who is that? That's Jaeger. That's Jaeger, who is very frustrated. Jaeger is typically in the video game, Jaeger's gadget is actually a setup gadget that he places. It's called a ADS or an active defense system, and it uh, neutralizes incoming throwables like grenades and stuff like that. So, um, but I think to help mitigate or make not as much setup for the defender, his act, his action or his ability um, in this game is actually a reaction um, to if I throw a throwable like a grenade into the room, I have to spend an additional action if I want it to succeed. Otherwise, it's neutralized. So Jaeger's a pretty cool. Um, Operator in this particular setup. I was curious how a possible blitz would work. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> gonna find out. Um, okay, so I'm just for my because I'm gonna use them. I I need to get my like this is this is pulse. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, I can't I can't keep up with the, all the different all the different guys, and I'm about to move them. So um, good to know. So, not that you were going to come over here and check them out anyway. You uh, don't know that. I could have. <laughs> so I, I still uh, may not even go for this. Who knows? Yeah, you may just <laughs> come for this bomb over here. Okay, so I'm going to move one, two, three, four. And now I have one, two, three, four. Four, I can locate Ash. He's located through the walls. And now Pulse is four away. So now that he's located, I can shoot. From four to six is one yellow and two reds. Okay. And because you are behind multiple walls, it's going to reduce by a maximum three of three. I will take that. <laughs> do you want to use you know your what? reroll? Yes, yes, I you do. You actually do? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Just so, you, just so we know, your reroll has been used. I know. If I roll another three... Okay. I so got it five. blocks two. So I take so, two damage. So Ash takes two damage. Probably not worth the reroll, but... <laughs> no, I'm I'm kind of okay with you using it already. <laughs> no. Okay, let me see what... He doesn't have any excuse now. <laughs> okay... Uh, let's see. 
If you guys have any questions while yeah. this is going, there's always going to be one person waiting to see what the other person does and their activation phase is absent. So if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in chat and I can answer them while Daniel's going or if I'm going, then Daniel and Allison can help answer them as well. So, if I can't answer them, I'll just let them know there's a question. <laughs> Allison will just, you know, be a middle man, be a question middle woman. Okay, so I'm going to... And if you're watching the replay, we'll answer questions as well. So if you have questions, in so replay, I can't we'll monitor that as well. Is this now in your line of sight for your Overwatch? Is what? Yes, I can see this part of the room now. So am I allowed to move? Or if I move, are you going to... If you move into a place where I think I have line of sight, then I can shoot you. But line of sight is going to be tricky for me. Okay. So I'm going to... I'm going to come here because I'm very confident that you don't have line of sight. I'm going to do one, two... Um, let's see, who's that? That's Jaeger. What What is Jaeger's destroy? Ah, uh, he only destroys yellow. Um, okay. Are you talking about the wall? Yeah. You have an impact grenade. Right. I'm going to use an impact grenade to destroy my own wall. And create a breach. Yes, and create you. a breach. And I'm going to use two more move actions there and set back up and overwatch right there facing back into the room. Okay. So that's two. And now... Um, what is smoke can only run five castle run two let's see I kind of boxed myself out so you're done with Jaeger I'm done with Jaeger okay. so Jaeger's done pulse is done and you've got one more if you want to yes that's I'm deciding if I want to. Uh, and I'm just going to want one, two, three, four. Nope, you know what? I'm going to do that and go into Overwatch up there. So you're moving upstairs, I'm so moving you can't upstairs. move anymore. Right. You got two more actions yep. technically if you want them. Now I can. Where's my little where are the tokens? The Overwatch tokens. Um They are, are they in the box? Right here. Oh right here. Okay, so that's Jaeger. No, that's smoke. Uh, okay. so he can overwatch a space. And it's only when you cross that space it's not line of sight with that space. So if uh, I come and overwatch yeah, it's, it's, right it's there. Cross that space from my understanding. Yeah. It's not so you would have to actually enter that space. Space, but it does stop me from being able to use that. No. Oh, so if you can if you come down with IQ there and contest that, then we then, have a then we'd have a little fight. Exchange off. of fire. Got yeah. it. So, uh, board dad says hi. Hello. Thanks for joining us. How's it going? We are deep in strategy, <laughs> kind of. So uh, you okay, moved so up, you did Overwatch. Um, can then, I do anything from... No, uh, I don't think you can. Uh, because you're upstairs. And your person doesn't have any upstairs abilities. So... Okay, so I can't throw a gas grenade through that spot. From my understanding, no. Okay. Okay. Then that is the end of my... That's three. I've activated three people. Mm -hmm. what, what's the word? I'm operators. Three operators. So yes. it switches to me. Yep. So now it switches to you. Okay. Um, choices, choices, choices. It looks like that's what you're going for. It doesn't. 
Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I feel like I should talk through the silence, but I also <laughs> feel like if I talk through the silence, I'm going to be distracting. Oh, you're out of time. Yeah, yeah. Did that reset when you went back? No, so the time that you have is across both activations. Oh, so th Didn't that's why that. I said we would probably just okay. be talking through most yeah. of our time. Um, <laughs> I think that. Let me see. You can get me to. Yeah. The. The attacker, man. What? Uh, just your your setup is totally like <laughs> a huge advantage to you setting up again. Even though you don't know where my people actually are, that's uh, me going before going after you. Yes. and reacting to what you've done. Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. <laughs> Let me actually see what uh, that's going to look like. Oh, good luck. Thank you. Are you leaving? I'm just Oh, no, you're here. going back to the couch. <laughs> what are you trying to figure out? Uh, if I decide to dispute that entryway, what that would that look like It would be an me. exchange of fire? Yeah. What page is that on? It's on... Uh, 20. 20. Okay, so it says, so if an entryway space already contains an opposing entry, this is, buckle yeah. up, people. We're, <laughs> we're reading straight from the rule book. So I, I think I'm just going to see what happens with some of the stuff. But you stuff. can't do that this turn anyway. Why not? You've already activated IQ. I can't bring somebody else up there? Oh, you could. <laughs> okay. Um... So yeah, if he chose to do that, just theoretically what he's thinking, if he chose to come up to the second floor and dispute that Overwatch token, the player owning the existing token may agree to remove it from the game board with no other effects. So I could say, sure, take my strategic spot. <laughs> I'll just walk over here to the other side and us people with guns will act like we didn't see each other. Or... You, an exchange of fire is triggered. During exchange of fire, the active player pauses the timer. Their operator fires a shot, treated as a free action, not counted as one of their actions available. This shot targets the operator that owns the disputed entryway overwatch token. It is fired at close range, and the target operator has heavy protection. If the non-active player's operator is not eliminated by this shot, their entryway overwatch token remains yeah. in place. I'm gonna and then they get to move shoot uh, Thermite upstairs gets rid of that um then i'm going to uh what do you call it i'm going to use an exothermic charge um one of his big boom boom um charges i'm gonna destroy this reinforced entryway over here and then i'm going to establish overwatch on it there with thermite and so that's him done. And then my last person I'm going to activate is Thatcher. And who did I activate? I forgot to turn my things over. You activated Pulse, Jaeger, and Smoke. So you have Mute and Castle left. Then I'm going to move with Thatcher. And I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five into um, this space here uh, behind that uh, door. And then I'm going to... Um, the reason it took two is because he was going over a window. Anytime you go over a window... You spend it, extra movement. It takes two. So then uh, he's moved in. And then I'm going to uh, use his EMP grenade here to throw an EMP grenade targeting this. And it um, 
removes electronic devices, even bulletproof, from the target space and adjacent spaces. So that gets rid of this camera in here. Um, Do you have a limited number of those? I have three, and I've okay. used one of them. So, and then I'm going to put him back on Overwatch facing um, this doorway space. Uh, so he's now on the other side of this table from Pulse behind the door, and now the bulletproof uh, camera on the other bomb site is out. And I've used both of my operators, and it is now over to Daniel's turn to activate his other two. Okay. So I've used Pulse. So I have Mute and Castle left. Is that right? Yes. So to give you a hint of what this is going to look like when you play multiple games of this, this is only our second time to fully play this game. Well, actually, for Daniel, it's kind of like three times. He played it with me, then he played it with Sun, then he played it with me again. But I would say that verse, like we played the first game very much as run in and shoot, um, which is not like it was still a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it, and we used some of the tactical nature. But... I feel like even in just this first yeah. round of five, we are utilizing... We're, we're thinking a lot more. A lot more. And so it really does pick up. And even though there's a lot of things to keep in mind, once you get that kind of like under, you know, under your understanding or whatever, you'll have a much easier time of moving through it. Is Roxy outside? No, she's okay. I can let her out. Um... I'm gonna go remove Overwatch. See if I can go one, two. Can I move through my person? Um, yes, you just can't end on that okay. space. Three, four, five. Come back there. I'm going to go ahead and reveal that I sure hope that's the real castle. <laughs> yes, I remembered right. Okay, so that is the real castle. Um, I'm come there. I'm going to shoot at Ash from a very long range shot through, it's through two walls, so I, you would get three, but he is located, so I can, or she. Do you see any problem with that? Yeah, I just don't know if you're going to be shooting, I don't think you're actually shooting through the middle of this, so I don't think you're actually going to hit Thatcher. Um, Would it but you, you can't even hit him though, yeah, because you don't know where he is. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I I think you're good, especially because of the locatedness of what you get. Yeah, so that's two yellows and a red. Okay. At it's seven ply. I assume that one, castle two, shoots three, two. Four, oh, two five. yellow and red. I thought you said two orange. That's six. only yeah. six. So that's two reds and a yellow. And I have a protection of three. Three. Yep. yep. There's only maximum maximum of three protection no matter what you're shooting through. You can't have more than three. And technically, I think I'm only coming through one wall there because I'm pretty sure that's going to be catching through that window. If it's not, it, no, it would, it would you catch You know, I, I'm going to go ahead and challenge this just because I'm, I'm legitimately curious about this. And also, what it would do is if he wins, he can negate my time or add time onto his. So I'm going to go ahead and challenge it. I don't think now, he has line of sight. I don't need line of sight. I'm shooting through walls. You're I know right. where you're you are. Right. So yes, yes, you're totally right. You're totally right. Yep. So... Three, four, five, six minus three is three. So Ash. I think is, Ash is dead. Ash is dead. Ash has four. So we did something good there. And I'm going to set up in Overwatch right there because I moved and shot. So my last action is to go back into Overwatch there. Okay. Now I have mute. Um, and mute, okay, so that was castle, right? Um, mute, and run two if I wanted to. Let's see. I'm still good. Two, three, four, five, and then I'm just going to run one 
and go into Overwatch right there. Okay, and that is, I, I think, my... Now, even though you're overwatching right there, you don't, you don't have to come down in that spot. No, okay. I could take, I could remove that and come down in another spot. Okay, so I'm gonna go there. That's my last two people. So I still have smoke and mute are still. Smoke is either in Overwatch or right there. And mute is either in either side of that room. Correct. Okay, so right. then we go to uh, end of round. I have lost one attacker, which gives me less time because I have fewer people. I should be able to make my decisions in a faster amount of time. No. Over Overtime has not been activated because I haven't done anything with the bomb. And we learned from last time, Overtime only activates if the entire round... Be sure to change the round marker. If the entire round ends with the bomb activate or deactivated, because he's trying to deactivate the bomb. And also location marks yeah. go away at the end of a round. So start round two. So it's my turn. So I have four people to activate now, which is sad. Um, Pulse killed me really quickly. Uh, I don't like Pulse. Um, castle. Yeah, I'm, but I'm it's, pulse it's Pulse. Pulse is the reason why that was even possible. Um, <laughs> so I know this is riveting watching us think. <laughs> I, I'm going to uh, activate IQ. I'm going to use her special electronics ability to... Um, Remove an electronics from a space in a upside, like an upstairs or a room that has access from upstairs through the through the ceilings. Which is all of these that have this little arrow in the corner. And I'm going to destroy this signal disruptor here, and just get it off the board. And then I'm going to move IQ um, into this space. I'm going to go one to come down here, and then I am going to go. Uh, <laughs> These are hard. The Overwatch is so tricky to mess yeah. with. Yeah. So what we learned is Overwatch. Every space that you enter and in, in line of sight with someone in Overwatch, they get to shoot at you. Two, three. Um. And then, so that's movement, and then I'm going to do, um, yeah, I think I'm going to drone, and I'm going to use my drone, which is going to activate that, and I'm going to send this drone token, um, right into, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, um, or five. I'm just going to put it right there and see where yep. you're at. Yep. So it is going to reveal and then locate them. So it's going to reveal, mute. I figured and, that was the case. So that is the real mute. Please stand up. The board. Please stand up. I just heard the slow say <laughs> And then <laughs> that also it, it reveals everyone in the room. Or uh, it locates. Locates them, yes. So that is going to locate mute. And Pulse, because Pulse is in that same room. Okay. All right. And then the second person I'm going to activate is I'm going to bring Thermite down as well. And I'm going to bring him here. Uh, and then I'm going to take away his Overwatch token. Then I'm going to shoot at um, Mute who is um, behind a heavy wall, so we'll give him three hit protection. Um, but three at spaces away. three spaces away, um, I'm going to use 
one of each die type. So And he's going to roll one red, and then the other two are going to be zero, so I'm going to come away unscathed yeah. from this. And Almost, that's but three I do damage. Away so you know what? I'm going to also be stupid and use my reroll token. It's okay. You're going to roll worse this time. You're going <laughs> to roll two hits. Still going to come away unscathed. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So you take two points of damage, just That's like exactly Ash originally what I did. Said. <laughs> exactly what I said. So you take two wound tokens. Okay, so Mute takes two. He has five, so I still have three left. And then with my third action, I'm going to set up Overwatch with Thermite to protect those guys in that room. Second action. Move. Second have... action. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Why would you take away over... You have to take away Overwatch. To move or do anything else. Yeah, any Anytime you move or do an action, you lose Overwatch. So you can take it off, it, move, and then put it back on. Yes, but it requires an action. It requires an action to put Overwatch back, to go back into Overwatch. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I have now activated two. I'm going to leave my other two. Okay. Uh, so now I need to activate... Okay. I've already thought about stuff that I've done wrong already that I yeah. would change next time. <laughs> That's what makes the game good. Oh, next time. I mean, well, I was actually so the the I was thinking about notes how. Over there in your computer? Yeah, so I'm, I have got an I've got like a massive Word document. Um, but I genuinely the though, flies I, back. the flies back for to to aesthetically land on the board. But um, I was thinking about this earlier. Which to me means that this is a good game, is that when Daniel and I were talking about doing a rematch, I was actively thinking since last week how I would play differently and what I would do. And I've been thinking about different movements and different possibilities for that time. And I just think that means that, like, it's a good, if it's got you thinking about it when it's not even on the table or near you. Like yeah. I think that's the hallmark any, of a good, of a really good game. That so I pulse. Wake up about is yeah, he's gonna heartbeat sensor. Oh yeah, so sorry. Pulse heartbeat sensor. Heart thermite. Um, thermite. Which means you've activated them, and now you can shoot with a pr yes. protection against him. So that's three from Pulse, who does two oranges and a yellow. If you kill my Overwatch guy before, <laughs> like before, <laughs> he can do. Hold on. Now I moved first. one, two. Yeah. Where is Pulse? Okay, so that's one, two, three. I'm going to move back this, here. When so you're that located, I'm, can I ripost through walls if you're located? I don't think so. I think that I think it's just line of sight. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have moved one away so that convenient I'm convenient response. Yeah. So that I'm shooting from four to six because that is Pulse's ideal range. I'll just. I'll move back here so that I'm still there. Okay. So now instead of, because I moved four to six away, I get two reds and a yellow instead of two oranges and a yellow. So let's see. Eight. Did you just kill him? I just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I just killed Thermite. We're going to have to have another rematch, Daniel. <laughs> Here you go. Man, Pulse is just ridiculous. And now I'm going to take Mute. Thankfully, I didn't have to shoot with Mute. And now you can kill IQ without having any overwatch. So there you go. One, two. Ugh. Wait, how does, where is Mute? Or like, go ahead and just flip Pulse over. Video game overwatch, yeah. Mute Definitely is... Understand that. So that's one, two. I need to be. Uh, <laughs> I think you're going to kill her as well. <laughs> it feels so wrong to back up <laughs> so I can shoot you better. Like, <laughs> you see me and I'm backing away from you're you. Like, so one I moment. Can, so I can shoot oh, that, you. Oh, that's better. I, I, the shotgun yeah. was getting too close to you. So that is a straight <laughs> shot with two reds and two oranges. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't, think IQ's to count. dead. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. Do we want to set up another game tonight? I think we're going to be done in the space of like... 
I had such good high ambitions for this. Was, Derek von Kurtzer last night, he was like, this game, you could set it all up and it could be done in 30 minutes. Yeah. Like, One, yeah. two, your, three, four. It's like time. you do 30 minutes of deployment and then 20 minutes of a really quick game. And you're like, right. well, I, I suck at this. And I, I apparently suck at this. Three of my five are dead already. Five, and then I'll go back into Overwatch. Well, in his defense, this is his third. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 what I'm. Yeah, this is your third time to play. Yeah, you're a cheater. So and I guess my second time. I was you much, practiced before we had. I a was rematch. pretty much walking Jared through how to beat me. <laughs> but you beat him. So okay. Now, so you have two people left. How can I kill Thatcher? Um, it would be difficult since yeah. Pulse is already activated. You would have to come into my line of sight. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to stop and see what you do this round. Solid choice. Yeah, so there we go. I'm going to pause now that I have activated. Three, it's, it's two. Hard. I have all five of these people here. I have to really look and see which one I've activated. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, so my goal is how can I have two people survive long enough and strike at the right moments? with half of the amount of tactical gadget that I had at the beginning. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate Thatcher. And what he's going to do is he is going to shoot through the wall um, with only light protection for you, two red and one orange at Pulse, who is directly in front of him. Um, and located. And the reds, do the reds have any blank side? They don't. They do not. They have one, twos, and threes. And I believe your light protection... Um, Is it just two? I think it just saves you from two hits. Uh, barricade, yeah. Light protection saves you from two hits. So if I get a lucky... We get seven or more. Oh, right? you only have four Pulse health. Only has four so if I get six or more, Pulse is dead. I got seven. seven. Okay, so Pulse, Pulse is, is dead. dead. I Good shot job. You finally wall. killed one of my people. Oh, that's where we're going with this. Okay, I see how it is. Like I said, I've, I've got to try and survive because it's only the second round. Wow. It is feasible to make it at least a close game. And that's feasible. Uh, the last round, the last game was very close after kind of the same thing. You took out a bunch of my people at the beginning. Yeah. So I've, I've narrowed it down to four instead of five. That's good. I am now going to um, move one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to run and go upstairs. So I'm hiding upstairs. <laughs> I'm going to hide upstairs. We'll see if I can, uh, I can stay alive. Um, Are you going um, to Overwatch anywhere? I can't. I had to use run as a second action. Okay. So I shot, moved, ran. So I'm done. Uh, and then... I will tell you... If, Sledge man, is going to go one, two... If you wanted to, you could go... And you could have made it one, two, three, four, five. Without oh. running. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I'm going so to do that. So you'd like to go into Overwatch. Um, yeah, I would like to put Overwatch... Um, um, on this bomb spot. Uh, so that's them activated. Now Sledge is going to go. Sledge is going to go... Um, I think Sledge is also going to go upstairs... And uh, he's going to put Overwatch on um, your sound effects. Mine. <laughs> he's going to put uh, there. And you know, we're just going to take a breather. It's been a bad five minutes. It's been a bad five minutes. I've died a lot. Um, and so I'm going to switch to you. And now it's... Uh, the second half of your second round. Okay. So. I'm just going to take heart in the knowledge that in all of my time playing video games, two people holding out against four 
is possible. I just have to be incredibly sneaky about how. So I can do. I move my Overwatch token? Uh, as soon as you move, um, it goes away. So, but if I want to stay upstairs, can I move this to a different spot? Yeah, I mean, okay. it, it, to, to me, it would be the equivalent of you staying up there and then moving, relocating, and okay. switching it. Because essentially what you're saying is, I'm going to establish Overwatch over here, and that immediately removes that Overwatch. Okay. Okay, we're going to take a little risk. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to contest that spot with smoke. Okay. Would you like to give it up, or exchange a fire? You know what? <laughs> um, you get to shoot first. I get to shoot after. Right. So I think I'm going to just give it up. Okay. <laughs> going to let you take that over. I don't like that you have a choice because I really feel like that's more of a sneak up behind you. <laughs> or, you know, thematically it could be, oh, he's coming into this room, I'm going to leave. Or it's like, no, I value staying here more than not getting a gunfight. Right. Okay. And both of your people are upstairs. Mm hmm. So I can't actively engage you upstairs. No. <laughs> You. I've only got two people left. He's got four. But I, mean, I could send someone upstairs to just keep moving you around, but that doesn't do it. Did you put Overwatch anywhere with... Right here with Sledge. Okay. You can come up there and, <laughs> and contest it. Oh, wait. If you contest Overwatch, I think you have to would have to reveal that person. Yeah, that's that's my... That smoke? Yeah, that's... Okay, smoke. well, then that is information. A need. Okay, so that was... I guess a movement. Um, now I don't know where to go. <laughs> that was my hope, is to, to uh, figure things out. Okay. Um, let's see. You killed you killed Pulse, right? Yeah, Pulse is gone. Okay, Pulse is gone. We can even put his little thing there since that happened to three of my guys in one round. I'm not bitter. It's okay, he's not bitter at all about that reroll. <laughs> to be fair, we both wasted the reroll in the first five minutes of the game. Because so. you want to be sure you use it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to Wait, who did I... Oh, I've damaged Mute. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I, I've hit someone. I re-roll. <laughs> I was like, wait a yeah, second. So I'm going to come down here. Three, four, five. That doesn't really... No, I'm not going to come down here. I can come down anywhere, right? I don't have to come down where my Overwatch is. Yeah, no, you don't have to. You can go down wherever you want. What are my options? I'll just come down here. So if we consider moving the Overwatch token one move, that's two. I don't actually. It's not a move. It's just you, it's just you leave that spot and okay. you're no longer watching it. So, so you, one, three, three, four. Well, that's one, two, three, four, and then go back in Overwatch facing that way. Um, so that was smoke is done. You've moved everybody on this round, haven't you? Yeah, this is this is your end of the round. Okay, so um, we're done with round two at the end of this. Okay, Jaeger. Nice <laughs> Jaeger bomb. I'm just gonna come in and can you have me a bulletproof camera? Um, in the box because I'm using mine I had one there no that was the one did I put that up during yeah yeah you put that you put that up during setup okay so I already used yeah. that one okay never mind then um, I've already used that's mute already used him yeah I think I'm good I don't really want to change anything 
Okay, so we um, are actually no. I'm gonna I'm gonna move Castle back there. Yeah, I mean you might as well move him. Now. And I'll move him there and stay in Overwatch that way. Okay. Okay. Um. So we are end of round. I was slaughtered. Uh, I lost one person. <laughs> I lost one person. So, um, so now our time has Devin reduced has, drastically. Devin has four minutes four across minutes. the entire yeah. round. And this is just in the beginning phase. <laughs> this is like the easy state. So if you if you start to get stuff, you'll start have to make like fast decisions, which is also how you can get those really quick games going. Because yeah. if you're making fast decisions, you're probably also going to make some fast mistakes, as I have done. <laughs> so, all right, next turn. We're going to start round three. It is my turn. I'm going to activate... I'm going to attempt to Let's do this quickly. Um, ba, 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 ba. Attempt to do this quickly. Oh, your uh, thing goes oh, away. I'm not located anymore. You're not located. You are looking directly at the bomb, though, overwatched. Um, you're like, this bomb is not going to get away from me. Um, man, I just... Ugh. Not great. We're on round three, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're on round yeah. three. I mean, you gotta come downstairs. You can't just hide in the attic the whole time. <laughs> um, I'm going to move downstairs with Sledge. I'm going to move one, two here yeah. to face... You're a person who does not have Overwatch on me. The reason I don't have Overwatch is because Overwatch is from the front edge of the square where the Overwatch token is. So I have, and it's a 180 degree arc of anything in line of sight. So I would have Overwatch into this entire room, even all the way over to here, but not in there. Yes, and so I'm going to take advantage of that by rolling a brutally close range shot at you um, with two orange and two red. Um, don't fail me now. Uh, oh, he's already hurt. I've only got to get three. Yeah. So he's definitely dead, because yeah. that's eight. So mute is dead dead, as opposed to just dead. Um, then, uh, I think I'm going to... And you only have one more person. Yes. Uh, I guess you still have one more move with... Yeah, I can still move with him. Um, <laughs> so how would it work if you... I'll wait till you finish. So I'm going to move here. And then... I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lean and move him here, leaning from this direction uh, to continue part of my movement. And then with my final, I'm going to create overwatch there so how does that work with smoke how do we determine that because smoke is technically you're not no, you're not I'm looking not. my way though yeah but i'm not i'm asking i don't think i'm technically in your line of sight I no think i think you, that this and this yeah. are too narrow i don't think i can see you okay um so i'm going to activate i've activated sledge and now i'm going to activate um thatcher and i'm going to to um now look at Claymore's real quick. You put it in an opening and you put a marker across the wall on an opposite wall from that opening. Yes. One, two. Three. 
Question for you. Do you think I can go one, two, three, four, and then five? Uh, if, we're, if we're looking at diagonals, the question is, can is I go that... Does that, like, can you block you I, off? I, yeah, I, I, I think, think it that, might block you off. Or were you going to say you think it's... No, I, I think that seems like a stretch to move diagonal yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, so... Um, Someone says, I think you might have a line of sight. Dress some... I don't think so. So, line of sight would... Are you, first off, I can't... Um, I don't have any more actions with sledge, so I can't shoot. Um, but I would have to go from the center of this to the center of where he is. Which so I'm if, fine, if I'm I did it that. super val, it's, I'm fine checking that as an example. Yeah, so you, you have this ruler. So you go. Oh, so I do have line of sight. That's good to know. So I have to move. So as soon as you move, I'm going to be able to shoot you. Unless I move out of that. Yeah. So that's how you check line of sight if you're. Oh, good call, dress. <laughs> They are looking overhead. Yeah, they, 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 they do have they do have overhead view, true. which is very helpful. <laughs> so, um, and in the all in pledge that I got, they're going to give me a little handy laser. Um, nice. So, uh, so that's going to be good for line of sight if any of you guys move here or beyond. Yeah. Um. So, what if I just stay there? If you don't move him if at I do, all, and I, if don't, I don't do I don't, anything. Yeah, I don't think that I can. It says when you end an action in line of sight. So if I do something there, if I do anything there, that activates your. Oh, it's holding up a business card. To the <laughs> That's awesome. What? He was holding a business card oh, nice. like top down <laughs> to check it out. That's, That's awesome. amazing. <laughs> um. Uh, also, shout out for having a business card. Um, <laughs> you're more of an adult than me. Uh, hmm. I still think that with Thatcher, it makes the most sense. You can't destroy anything uh, red. And then a Claymore... Um, How does, oh, I don't have... Yeah, another heavy wall section. So, um, Oh... Yeah, I do kind of like that. Um, her run action is what? Another, his run action is another two. Oh, he's not the best person for this. Um, I think that I'm actually going to. Uh, is this Thatcher? Yeah. Man, this is tough. Oh, that rubbed my skin the wrong way. Um, You're out of time. <laughs> We've been out of time. Um, I think even without the talking and stuff, yeah. take that into account, you've spent more than four minutes. Uh, yeah. Oh, to what to do 100%. 100%. Um, I said we were going to play with a no timer. Yeah. Um, but in the actual game, which you only have two people, so if you move Thatcher now, you wouldn't be able to move Thatcher later anyway. Yeah, I think I'm just going to let you go. I'm going to see what happens. Yeah. Thatcher's still hiding out upstairs. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. So who have I moved this? Is this my first? This is my first move around three. Yes. So, so you have, well, yeah, you're three. Yeah. So mute's, no, oh, mute's dead. Okay. So I need to, I need to move out of the way, so I'm going to go there immediately so that I'm out of your line of sight. So I'm going to just check repost real quick. Just because I, it's the thing that. Well, it's if you end a movement. If you, or if you move. 
Yeah. So you so you you moved out of it. So right? I'm moving yeah. out of it. Yeah. So that's one, two, three, four. I'm going to set up an overwatch there. Um, I'm going to set it that way. So if you decide to pop out of the attic. And then... Hmm. I think he might be in line of sight too. <laughs> that seems a lot. No, surely that. It, it, it might just be this line. I think he might be safe. I think if you went here, I think I would yeah. have line of sight on you. Um, so you would have uh, to like they... stick up here. Yeah. I th I do think like here or here I would. Is what about here? Here? No, here. I think if you went here, I don't. Yeah. But that's... if you move here, I do. Okay. So you would, ha if you want to go this way, you'd have to like cut yeah. the Yeah, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do, oh no. No, I'm just going to stay there. Um. What is, that's Jaeger over there? Yeah. No, that's Castle. Okay, I'm just going to stay there for right now. Okay. I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to, it's now to you. Switch to me? Yep. Okay. Oh, this is long gone. Um. Oh, and sorry, I bumped Jaeger. He's... You're fine. That's okay. So we are on currently on round three of a five round game. I have three operators left. Devin Who have you activated? Two operators. Uh, I, uh, Smoke was the only person I activated. Neither of them. Neither of the other guys have moved. Nope, they stayed there. You're just gonna hide out in the attic. <laughs> Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to... Uh, might as well do something with him. So, I'm just going to put... Uh, da, 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 da. Why don't you just come downstairs? I'm just going to put Overwatch here. That's all you're going to do? And, um, yeah. Okay. So, you're up, man. <laughs> Activate your other two. I'm playing it slow. But playing I don't want slow. to. <laughs> That's fine. Um, let's see. You know what? I'm have I'm I'm not gonna move. You're not gonna move anybody. I'm, gonna let you, <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm going to force you to do something. Okay. All right. So we're gonna end the round. Oh wait. Hold on. Oh. Well. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> not sure what you're doing. What you're thinking? I don't know if I should tell you what I'm thinking. <laughs> I mean, you can force my hand. I'm gonna have to go at some point. <laughs> but I'm gonna come scoot around here. Do 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 do. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, five. five. I'm set up right there.
Okay. And then, so you're done. Yeah. Okay, so I've killed, I've knocked off the person that you would have had, and we can do um, next turn. Okay. We'll start round four. So we are now on round four. It's getting down to the wire and things that I'm able to do. Uh, Genuinely curious how you're going to play this. Same here. Yeah, I was going to say he is too. Uh, but I, I think I have a plan. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, I am going to... Yeah. I'm going to bring down Thatcher. Okay. Uh, so which immediately gets rid of this Overwatch token. Where are you bringing Thatcher down to? I'm going to bring him here. In the stairwell? The other side, not where you were. No, yeah, not where I okay. was. And so I'm going to move here and move here and then destroy. Yeah. And so I've destroyed this barricade. I'm also located because I was moving through where that camera is. Yeah. And now I'm going to shoot Castle with, at that range, two red, one orange. And I don't have... You do not have because cover not because you're not adjacent to it. To it. Um, so if he was right here, he would have some yeah. form of protection by being able to hide behind the table. But since he's not here, he doesn't have overwatch on me and he doesn't have cover. So I'm going to shoot an unobstructed uh, two red, one orange and hope I don't need my reroll token. And you do. And I, I do. So I've only done but three you don't damage. Have it. So you've done three damage with, to Castle, who has five health. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, try to put the pressure on you. Take one movement to straighten up, um, one movement here, and then I'm going, and so that was two movements. I'm going to activate the bomb. Okay, that's what I was. I've been so focused on that bomb. <laughs> That I wasn't <laughs> sure if you saw that one because I just realized that's that was that. Yeah, that's why I blew up that entryway okay. a little long ago. Okay, that was what I realized is there's another <laughs> bomb there and I was hoping you missed that too. <laughs> yeah, so I've activated it and that was one action. I'm halfway through a movement. I'm going to move back here. Now, can you activate uh, yeah, diagonally? Yes, it just says adjacent. It does not say and, orthogonally adjacent. And adjacent, adjacent is con diagonal is adjacent. Yes, so then I'm going to come back and lean again and with my third action, do Overwatch. Um, so, I've activated both of my people. And I did it in under four minutes. Be proud of me. Good job. Now the pressure's on you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I need to... No, if it ends at the end of this, you don't win. We go into overtime. Overtime, yep. Okay. So, I'll still likely lose. <laughs> so, Thatcher is located. Yes. So, I'm going to turn castle and from one, two, three, four. Do you need to move him to have optimal... <laughs> I mean, I'll. Two, I'll I mean, actually, ahead. two red and yellow. I'll go ahead and move there. So that's yeah. four. Where's cut? So two, two red, red and yellow. yellow. Yeah. So does Thatcher have any damage yet? He does not. Okay. Neither of them are hurt. Okay. But you'll probably be more lucky than me and get the kill. Yes. Which you got six definitely did. Okay, so Thatcher is dead. Um, oh, and we immediately removed this bomb. Yes. So that's once true. a bomb is activated, the second bomb goes away. Um, so that was one, two, three, 
four, five. You won't be able to blow that up because this is orange and that's red. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> um, I specifically chose that uh, because it had it had red and you couldn't blow up red. And I don't have anything that can blow up red. Nope. God. Um, let's see who has no. So that was so castle. Okay. So I'm going to move there. That's where you were. Oh no, you did move there to yeah, shoot. So, I so moved you, there, you moved, moved and back. shot. You have one more action plus your finishing move, movement. Um, so I'm going to throw a nitro cell. One, two, three, four. Because I can, have line of sight on that. I have. Yeah. I feel like I have line of sight to there. Keep in mind that that will not. It won't kill you, but I don't think it'll you. even. I, I I think my person is here. Oh, okay. Yeah, your person. Okay. So. So never mind then. So I'm going to move up. I'm just going to move there. I mean, let me look that up real quick on Leamy. I'm going to move there and go into Overwatch right here. And then. I'm going to come around here. Oh, okay. A operator targeted while in the leaning position benefits from any protect protection provided by the space containing their leaning standee, even if the targeted space is the one in which the operator is leaning. Okay. So I think you could throw it there, but it, I would have, you know, three protections. So if I go right here, I, I feel like I can see there, but you can't see me. I'm still... I, I mean, I, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to throw a nitro cell... Which is going to do two orange with a minus three. Actually, no, I'm not going to throw it. I'm going to stay here, put my overwatch there. Okay. And I'm going to move both of these guys up into overwatch through just coming to this space. Okay. Okay. So that is the end of round five. Round four. Round four. But, but now we go into overtime. Now we go into overtime. Um, end of round. Overtime. Um, start overtime. I'm just going to pause real quick because I need to look up a rules question. Um... And what is your rules question? Um, smoke grenades. It's a it's genuinely fifty fifty right now because this <laughs> is the line. Kyle said it doesn't look good for you. We're in overtime. I have to deactivate the bomb by the end of my <laughs> Are turn. Are you talking about me, Kyle? <laughs> he's probably talking about me. I'm, I'm sure he's talking about you, but it is it is still up in the air. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm talking about you. Um... So we're down to the wire. We're in overtime right now. If he keeps that bomb deactivated until the end of my turn, he wins. If I deactivate, if I reactivate the bomb, if I kill you but don't reactivate the bomb, which I can't see how that would happen, would you still win? I think so. Okay. I mean, that's how you win in the video game. I'd have to check that. I haven't checked end game scenarios yet. <laughs> um...
Uh, Kyle said he run won yesterday by running ten spaces, running past three people, flipping to get the to token. It. <laughs> yeah, he's got a good Overwatch there, and I don't really have a way to get behind him. So it's gonna be interesting. To see what he does. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't so timer heavy on you when we played last time. I never time. ran past the timer. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. We both did. Last time. This time I've been still within the timer, unless I've been... Yo, you've got a game on me, man. You've got an extra game oh. on me. Um, So, like, real quick, we do need to determine what happens if you defuse it, but I'm still alive. It does, does it go to a, is the, because no, it's overtime. No, in overtime, if I defuse if, if you, if you defuse it, it's over. If I refuse it. You yeah, like, if you rearm it. If I rearm it, then it's over. Yes, if I rearm it, yeah. Okay, then... The problem, Kyle, is he's in Overwatch right now, and what we learned, we... We checked this with the developers to make sure if you're in Overwatch, every space. So if I came here, that may not be line of sight. But if I come here, he shoots me because he's in Overwatch. And every space that I move into his line of sight, every space counts as completing an action. It is not our initial understanding was complete because it says if you complete an action in line of sight, they can repost, is that how you say it? Yeah, repost, yeah. They can repost, but it's actually it's in, for Overwatch purposes, every space moved is considered a single move action. You still have five spaces, but every space you move through in line of sight of someone in Overwatch, they, they get a chance to shoot you over and over and over again. So I couldn't even run and... And diffuse that with Castle because he's he's watching me. But you got to do something. <laughs> True. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to see if this works. Uh, I've been checking rules to make sure I'm doing it okay. So I'm going to uh, actively. Did we determine that if you're leaning, you need to unlean to do a different kind of action, or can you do an action while you're leaning? I think you can do an action while you're leaning. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate a claymore. No. Uh, last night, there were the rules that you had to move, like, or you had to get out of the lean position in order to do an action. In order to do an action. I know you have to do it in order to move, okay, but if you're doing an action right. from that position... Okay. Where is, what page is leaning on? Do you know? I'm just flipping through pages here. Um, it's uh, pretty high up at the top um, in movement. It's on uh, it's 16. Um, regardless, I need to move anyways. So, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, op operators, uh, they can lean out from behind a wall there before gaining a line of sight while remaining protected. For one movement point, an operator can lean into an empty, orthogonally adjacent space. Operators cannot lean through breaches or over obstacles. Place the operator's miniature, all that. The leaning operator op op occupies two spaces. Considered present. So it says they vote. cannot move while leaning, but they use the space containing it whenever actions are targeted in the lean space. It has the same effects on gameplay as moving from one space to another. Um, but it didn't, it, I, I never read anything about, uh, how that works with, um, you know what, I'm just going to see how this goes. Okay. Yeah, I, I can do it legally this way anyways. So I'm going to unlean, which pushes it back. I'm going to lean later though. I'm going to use one of these to deploy a claymore, um, here facing this direction. Facing which direction? Facing. Facing that entryway behind okay. me. And then I'm going to move back and do Overwatch again right there. 
Okay. So I'm going to like lean back, pop a claymore down, lean back, and get Overwatch up in the same direction. And what does a claymore do? Two red points of damage, two red die of damage as soon as somebody comes in there. Two red dice or two red? Two red die. Okay. So potentially enough to kill you. Potentially. Potentially enough to kill one of your people entirely. Okay. Let's see. So, it's your turn. And I did it technically in under four, but I had to pause like five times for rule checks. So, Message retracted. That sounds mysterious. Sounds, sounds fishy. Okay. So, <laughs> who, let's see. So, I've activated. It's your move. Okay. I don't have any. Here, can you hand me my guys? They're both coming down. Let's see. <laughs> Jaeger, wait, who has the better? That with those minis. Who has the better close range? Jaeger gets three. Smoke has Smoke four. Smoke is the better one. Jaeger, you're, you're coming down first. You're coming down first. All right, so I'm going to roll two red die of damage against Jaeger. My hope is that this kills him, because if it kills him, I think that it will take up. If he's able to come down and kill me with a shot, then I'm dead, because then he can come freely to disarm. Yes. My hope is that you don't fully kill me out of some sheer luck. And, and out of some horrible luck, I did not kill you, and you took four... Wait. I did, took four to... No, he has five. I'm he has sure. five? Golly. Well, I'm done. Okay. So now, I'm going to shoot you with Jaeger. Whereas Jaeger gets two reds and a yellow. Watch you get the perfect amount. Yeah, there you seven. go. Seven with worse die. Oh, wow. Okay, so, so seven. Dead. And, and then, then you can continue your movement. Two, three, three four, four. Diffuse. Hold on, I'm going to bring smoke Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Two, three, four. And we'll just one, two, three, four. And we'll all happily together <laughs> flip this back over. So he, here was my hope. My hope was that the Claymore would kill... Jaeger. One of your dudes. And then the other person would have to come down and shoot, but not kill me. I guess you could have also done I, a nitro yes, cell. Because you, you, you can't do the same action twice. Right. So my hope was that you wouldn't kill me, and then he would have to come, yeah, which and you wouldn't have enough actions. The red... The fact that I did four instead of five is not great on my side. Yeah. But um, the other unlucky thing was I thought I could kill... Castle outright when he was just standing in the open. Yeah, and you didn't. And I was one wound away or two wounds away from killing it. It's, and a, if very, I had, it's a very familiar just flip yes. position because in our last game, so, I came around big this oof. corner. Yeah. <laughs> big oof. So, Ugh, man. Game number two. What's cool though is I was down one to three, and at one point I was down two to five. And it still came down yeah, to you, a single round. You forced my hand. So I'm going to switch us back. So, yeah. So, I, you definitely forced my hand in. Oh, there's a dog. <laughs> it's the dog. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry, our dog just scratched the window and popped She's up into the... She's she would like in now. <laughs> so, yeah, and you forced my hand because I forgot about that bomb. Like, completely. Completely. Until I realized... I was surprised why you were just chilling over there for a while. Because <laughs> there was one bomb there, and I figured you were just going to come in here, and I forgot that there were two bombs. <laughs> so. No, I, I do like that, like, I felt, man, I have no hope. Yeah. But, like, if I had a series of fortunate events... Yep. I could have won that. Yeah, and it could have could have definitely turned around... What to, I What I needed was one more action. So what, what I was going to do, and, and the other thing is, is if you can do an, I need to figure out, I need to ask, I need to talk to the devs and see, can you do an action while leaning? Or do you, I, I think theoretically or game wise, mechanically, it makes sense that you have to unlean, straighten up and then do an action. Yeah. Um, but if I could have, I needed one more action because I was going to claim more here and then I was going to put smoke here so that you couldn't have line of sight on me. Right. And then you would have had to come in blind. Um, 
And now, it, why wouldn't you have been? I, I would think smoke. I think you could because it's an overlay. So if I had put it like right here, no, no, I'm saying I, I don't see what I wouldn't. I would understand if you couldn't like destroy something while leaning, but you'd throw a grenade while leaning. Yeah. So to me, though, like if you can do one mechanically, like unless should, it's specifically uh, like unless I, it specifically says you should be able to do the other. So I tried to lean on the side of caution. I didn't want to cheat. Um, yeah, it said, I love watching you guys play. You guys actually understand the rules. There are so many playtesters that are miscalling line of sight and cover addition or movement rules. Yeah, we... we thank you. Thank I mean, you. We, we messed up yeah. the last round. <laughs> yeah. We messed up the last time. The developers let us know we messed up on a few things. So we both reread the entire rule book last night. Uh, and, I, even before last night. I mean, yeah. I've read it like three times now. Yeah. And, it, you know, and then I played with Jared. So um, It's an intense Yeah, it was... But it does, it's one of those things, once you get it, it's not... An the less and less of, you'll have to check stuff. Yeah, line of sight, once you get it, it makes sense. How to use, how to like destroy things. Once you understand the icons, it makes sense. It's not, it's not a game with this big series of complex things where you have to go check the rules and see what causes what causes what causes what. Like it's, it's... I love how it shows how much time you've used at the end. So it's just like, full time, full time, full time. My deployment time was nothing, but, uh, yeah, so, um, man, this game, yeah. like, I want to play again right now, and I'm, like, annoyed yeah. that I lost, okay, so and, 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 and I'm not annoyed that I lost from, like, a competitive, in the sense of, like, oh, I lost, I can't no. handle losing, it's more like, I want to do this again, and I want to do it better. Yeah, and, it, and both games... Came down to now you won last time. Forgetting the reroll thing, <laughs> you won last time. Two after, like two or three years down the road, it's going to be like. Remember that one time when you only won. No, I'm not. I'm saying, regardless <laughs> of the reroll, regardless of the reroll, like it was kind of reversed last time. I was the attacker. It got down to two or three versus five, and I still I still lost, but I lost like. Because I ran out of, I think, the bomb was here. Uh, the bomb was here. I was two spaces away and just did not have enough movement points. Same thing. I tried to do what Kyle did. Run in there, flip the bomb back over yeah. so that it would end that way. And I just did not have the points to do it. I think one thing that I need to keep in mind that I remembered once you killed half of my team is that there's more time than you think. Like, there are more round. like, I... Five rounds seem short until you're playing five Until rounds. you're playing five rounds. And I think that, I think I actually effectively made you very scared in the first round about the ability to move into your most vulnerable sites. Yeah. Like, I moved up, I destroyed the fortified entryways, gave me access to the bombs. My error was, I should have slowed down. Yeah, I didn't the, have to move in as fast, and moving in as fast got me killed. Because you have until the end of round five to flip the bomb over. There's exactly. nothing so. Because what I could have done is what I did once I was down. People was I waited until I could find the opportunity to move in behind one of your people. Yeah, and that's, kill them when they're unprotected from the rest of the team. Correct. That is that is the. And which I should have done, if I had done that from the beginning. Which is effectively what I did with you using Pulse is just... This is why killing, killing Pulse yeah. helped even out yes. what I could do. And he's definitely someone that like in future games, I'm going to like headhunt Pulse. Because yeah. his location thing is frustrating. Yeah. And I mean, it's in, only, in a tactically good way. It's on, But it's only four spaces away. So the fact that you stacked everyone up right there... Hurt me a lot. Hurt you a lot. Yeah. And, and again, it in, is in, in, in the beginning. I was like, "Oh, this is gonna work. I'm gonna yeah. like blitz in here and, and work." But um, yeah, and having is, me near Pulse did not help. It is different than I mean, video games. Someone's walking outside; you can't actually see them. You do have knowledge of where technically people are. You just can't engage them. So I do know with Pulse, I need to get over here within four spots of you. That way, I can locate you. So that is a little removed from reality and that mm -hmm. but it's it, it is what it is there's no way you can avoid that yeah yeah I, so, I think i just i think i moved in a little too hastily 
Like I was like, ooh, I'm neutralizing his defenses. Yeah, and you I'm really hop in. You really do need to I think move slowly, come in behind people, you know, create that situation where it's like I'm I and I can overwatch this way because I know that you don't have the the movements to get people in behind me because everyone's right here. So because you did that, I was able to focus over here, where if you were all around the building, I have to pick which way I'm overwatching, things yeah. like that. And technically what you did is something that, as like defenders do in the video game all the time, like you personally, like you purposely destroyed your own interior yeah. to create more centralized positions of overwatch, mm -hmm. which is like, that's what people do with impact grenades in the video game. They're like, oh, we need a rotation into this room, let's blow it up ourselves, and then we'll have access to it. And so, yeah. me being able to, like if, before you did that, having access to this room, you you blocked it all in. To right. where I, if you didn't do that, I could have easily held that whole space. Yeah. But because you did that, you were able to give Overwatch from a centralized location that doesn't have any entryway points into there and make it visible. So they said, after reading the rules, I do believe you can do any action while leaning that does not have a movement. Yeah. Grenade. So the so the other issue is that uh, the other issue, Kyle, is that using claymores and smoke grenades are both tactical gadgets, and you can only do an action once. So what I would have loved to have done is put a claymore down, throw a smoke grenade, and then like reposition. Um, but I couldn't do that, and so, um, I just needed, like, one more action yeah. to be able to do what I wanted to do. Um, I agree with you on the leaning. I mean, I, I do that in the, you know, I mean, in the video game, you know, you're leaning and you throw something all the time. Although it, it does make sense, I, again, it, it, part of it is just how, how, uh... But, you know, technically, I was overwatching this direction and planning the claymore was behind me. Right, so. that's where I said, yeah, so you were... You were technically here, leaning out here, looking this way, and planting a claymore on the wall around the corner behind where your head is. So that's yeah. That's what was, yeah. I could see if they if it required you to straighten up. And part part of my trouble is once I mean I know I've said this before, but part of my trouble is definitely once again having played the video game so much is trying yeah. to mentally disassociate exactly. some things from the video game to the board game because mechanically they have to change some stuff. Like, it can't operate the same right. as a video game. It's not the same media. It's not a first-person... Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's not a first-person, you know, shooter experience in a 3D environment. You're on, like, a 2D board, and there's a bunch of mechanics yeah. that you have to do because it's not real-time. Like, this is simulated real-time with a timer. So, that is stuff that is hard for me. Um, I mean, like, I know that I've talked to you about this off-camera, but, I mean, simply the fact that this is supposedly the upper floor... Yeah. I mean, I mean the first floor, and there is a floor above it. In consulate, that's not the case. Like this is the second floor. There's a floor beneath it. I mean, you can get on the roof, but yeah, I'm, I'm not having to do the, like, all of the stairways go. Down. <laughs> yeah, all the stairways go down, but that's actually going up. Um, so it's just kind of like uh, doing a little bit of mental gymnastics for me, translating what I know about the game versus what I n now know about the board game. Um, I think that like one point that. Um, I think they've done a really good job on that I didn't realize the first game is operator health versus dice. There's a really fine balance between when you get a really good roll and you're like, I wiped out that operator. Yeah. And you get just a bad enough roll that you don't kill them. Like, th there's a good balance there where you have some t rewarding times where you're like see right there i just rolled two red and a, an orange which are the best die yeah. two of the best dice in the game and one of the medium dice i didn't kill an operator unless i killed a weaker operator yeah but you know same dice could have killed anybody if i'd rolled just a little bit differently and so i think that the i think the dice are fair and i think the operator yes health is fair yeah and i and there were again there were you shot me with your best possible situation, and I missed. And, yeah, and I didn't you got, kill you. You got three. I was, I like, I was almost certain. I mean, if I had killed Castle there, it would have made a two-on-two -two situation, and and you could have gone Overwatch into that room. Yes, 
Yeah, it's, you could have come right here, gone into Overwatch, put a claymore there. I mean, there. That, that was Thatcher at medium. So the, uh, once again, that was that was two red and an orange. So roll it once, I get four hits. Roll it again, I get you know six. Yeah. So um, and that that's right there on that balance. But and I don't think I Kyle, I want to play again. Yeah. I agree with you. I want to play again. Just um, not tonight. <laughs> Ten o'clock. Maybe I should not do it tonight. Um, but because even like I had. Castle, I had Smoke, and I had Jaeger, both of which can run two. So had you been able to do that, if you're there... Uh, watch Overwatch if, on the hole and watch Overwatch out there. If you're yeah. uh, if you're there with Overwatch, I don't have a move. If you had killed Castle, you could have moved back into this corner in Overwatch, put a Claymore there to take out whoever comes through Are first. you talking about when they were up? Yeah, and if, if you had taken out Castle there... That would have been one. You would have had two people, but even without. Yeah, that, let me see. If you were upstairs, you could have gone one, two, three, four. I think five, this would have been my six, closest. seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, from there, so you, you would have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with a run disarm. So you still. No, I only have seven with a run. None of my guys can run more than two. I could not have gotten to that bomb. Oh, pulse. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. I mean, you would have been diagonal. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, you, you could have theoretically still done it. Yeah. But I'll put them back on their little bomb party that they had diffusing it. That does happen yeah. in the video game. Like, if you have multiple so operators, say, they'll just, like, chill by the bomb and, like, bomb claymore, up and down. Put a claymore there. You put a claymore there, and you got it. I can't, though. Why not? Because you have to have it from a heavy wall to a heavy wall. Oh, I couldn't have even done it there. I would have had to do it here or here. I could have done it there um, or, or there. You could have, yeah. I so e either way, that's what I would have done. I would have just moved, done it there. Same thing would have yeah. happened. Um, but yeah, it has to be heavy wall to heavy wall. So like you can't do it here. And I, I couldn't have even done it here, blocking off that hallway. Because um, yeah, so, so th th that's the trick with a, with a Claymore. You have a very minor amount of places that you can put it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, I, say, I like watching you guys play, but this part yeah. of how you analyze what you did is way more entertaining. Yeah, I mean, this this game. Is I mean, this is what I was yeah. saying. What I was, I was talking about with you a moment ago. Like, I've been thinking about the game for the last yeah. week, and to me, like you know, there are certain games that get me excited, and usually there are, there are ones like this that are a little bit more complex, but it maybe take some more time. But this is. This is fusing some of what I love about board games with one of my favorite IPs. So. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think you're you're uh, doubting you're going all in. I'm not. I'm not. I, so I. She's joking because I ha I already have an all in pledge on <laughs> Kickstarter. Um, I'm not doubting that I'm keeping it. I'm just trying to come to terms with the financial reality of that, what I'm what doing. doing. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like. I've I've got a week to try to decide. Oh, this is what I'm doing with, uh, yeah. you know, three you know three hundred dollars of my money once I factor in shipping or whatever. So yeah, which worldwide I was like, U.S. had the best shipping. U.S. has the best US shipping. U.S. had the best shipping. So. Outside of that, though, and it's got the. And you know, Alex talked about this on Should You Back It. He yeah. did a, he did a video on Should You Back It. Um, it was a good video. He, <laughs> Kyle's like, I'm also a smooth operator. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm also a smooth operator. Um, but uh, he was one of the things he was discussing was the fact that if you go in at the two higher pledges, the amount of money that the shipping costs is incrementally more like stomachable at the higher values because like you know if if if, you, if your if your smooth operator pledge is two hundred seventy dollars um, or two hundred sixty or whatever. And then you have fifty dollars shipping. Proportionally, you're paying much less for what you're getting That's or true. what you're paying. If you're paying the seventy dollar or sixty nine dollar entry pledge, and then thirty dollars for shipping, it's all about the, the 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 the, the amount that you're paying for shipping versus yeah, what you're paying for um, the game is is substantially different. Yeah. Yeah. So shipping. Oh, it's loading everything. Shipping for. Thirty dollars to ship the yeah. fresh recruit. So you know you're 40. you're paying seventy dollars or sixty nine. Round it up seventy dollars for the base pledge, thirty dollars for the game, hundred dollars total, thirty percent of which is shipping, 
And then, you know, if I get what I've got, you know, $270. It makes sense. That's a sound. Are you, are you trying to convince That's me? That's a sound. Uh, yes, you know, $270 plus $50 is, you know, 530 seconds, which is, you know, right. which is, an, it is a little bit more than an eighth. So you're talking about, you know, 12.5% versus 30%. In it is more financially cost. efficient to back the, the all in. Yes, in terms of shipping that you're adding on. So, I mean, if you're talking about financially efficient, yes. $100 versus $320 is different. But in terms of the ratio, uh, did you vote on the new skin? It's, I also voted for Tachanka um, because uh, I liked the um, I liked the kind of like Nordic uh, Viking outfit that Tachanka had. Um, and the uh, these players, <laughs> so awesome. Tachanka just got a rework on the video game, so now he's a much more viable operator. Um, he 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 used to be they he used to be a meme that nobody would play. They would just call him Lord Tachanka because his 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 gadget was useless and just he was never picked. But I so I, I also voted for Tachanka, Kyle. Um, I did like that. Um, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I think Ash is a good operator. I just I thought Tachanka's outfit was cooler. And since his rework, I think he's more of something that someone could actually use. Um, How many oper operators? There are 60 the operators in the game. So 30 each? 30 each. That's a lot. Yep, it's it is. It's a lot. It's usually that. Huh? You only play five? You only use five per game. So that's another reason why getting at least the second level pledge gets you all the operators. The all-in pledge that me and Kyle got, and that other people got, <laughs> our Lord and Savior, Lord Tachanka. Um, so the the one that we got, really, it doesn't add as much to gameplay. You're getting, you know, um, like extra dice. You're getting the laser pointer. You're getting the neoprene tray. Um, the the second level pledge though is where you get all of the operators. Yeah, you're one. And five. so to to me, like the other reason why I decided to go at least second tier, but then also full tier, is if you get all the operators, you get sixty operators, or you know, you know, fifty four operators, because I don't think they have the final four operators that are in the video game in the board game. But you're just getting so much variability. Like I mean, you know, Daniel and I, or Daniel and Jared, or whoever's playing, could play. 20 different games and they would play completely differently because of just the operators yeah. that are in there. I mean, like I brought IQ and I was like, bye Jared, here's all your electronics gone. But if I didn't bring that person, I could bring Montaigne and be like, oh, I'm going to have a huge shield I walk behind. Mm -hmm. um, so like, like study your characters. Yeah. Like yeah. Which ones you want and that's what I about. never yeah. did in the games. Like I was, again, I was yeah. very like, just take kind of the, the standard kit, maybe Maybe adjusted a little, but it's the first one. Oh, the first one. But so. I bought it for the 3D terrain. So, yeah. So, the, oh, th that's the other bit that I forgot. You you get the dice. You get the dice tray. You get the laser pointer. But you also get 3D terrain. So, all of this stuff becomes plastic Not, mi miniatures instead of stuff. But you still get the cardboard. Yeah, I think you still get those in the base plot. You just also get a, a, an additional box for 3D terrain. Okay. Um, I mean, that looks 3D to me, so I'm totally satisfied. No, I mean, this, this is, a, I mean, for a, first of all, for a prototype. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> well, the pool table is my favorite. But also for just not even, yeah, the pool table. Yeah. I, I also, it's also fun to be like, where, where am I going to place these? And, and, you know, last time I put the pool table in this, like, conference room, and this time I put it, like, in the central area. But, um, yeah, I, these are fantastic 3D terrain yeah. for the core box and other, other stuff. But... Yeah, no, I man, that's a great game. Just, it's so good, yeah. and I I like it even more after the second play mm -hmm. than I did after the first. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's one of those. Again, the more you play, the more strategic you're going to get. The more you're going to understand your options, and just the better the experience is going to be. And so for me, this comes into the category of big box games, but. And I, you know, I, I don't know if it's my love for the IP or just because I'm currently playing it and it's Cult of the New, but I have Twilight Imperium. I have Forbidden Stars. I have, um, you know, Too Many Bones. I have a lot of these big box games that I, for the amount of time that it takes, there's so much enjoyment that I get out of a really long game. Hmm. And this is a big box in terms of all that you could get with a Kickstarter, but it plays, I think, faster. And because you can do one on one, yeah. The only other game out of like those, like you can't really play Twilight Imperium one on one. 
Now, when you get like a six to eight hour game of Twilight Imperium in with, you know, four or five people, it's so much fun and it's a blast and it's worth the time that you put into it. But the only other game that I know of that plays one-on-one as well and as satisfying for me is Star Wars Rebellion. But the caveat with that is that Star Wars Rebellion could take three to six hours. And I mean, if you get, if you get like two people who really know how to play and play frequently, you could get it in maybe two and a half hours. And can you play that one-on-one? You can play that one-on-one. And yeah, I've never played either. I've never yeah. played Twilight Imperium. Well, we can remedy that horrible, yeah. horrible error. <laughs> um, but the thing about this, though, is it plays one-on-one, but it does it in a shorter time period. Yeah. Like, I mean, number one, we took more I mean, time than we normally did. We, two we've been, hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. And That's, really, we stopped at 10. Yeah. So it's, it's really just been two hours. Yeah, we spent two hours. We also explained the game. and. I think this game with you no, play it in ninety minutes with no discussion, just Maybe sitting across 60, the table. Bad game. Yeah, I just sitting across the table. If we were really going by the time limit, things like that, I think, I think sixty to ninety minutes is totally realistic. I've heard about GKR heavy hitters. Um, I, I haven't played it, and I don't know anyone who owns it, but I've heard about it. Um, so yeah, I, I think I would like this, and I definitely like you know, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll enjoy this prototype for as long as we have it and we can keep playing it. As soon as Mythic needs us to send it to another reviewer, you know, I want as many people yeah. to talk about this and to play and I want to see other people play and keep talking about it. So I'm happy to, you know, send this on as soon as they need that. Um, but it, yeah, as soon as this is gone, I'm ha- I'd happily play the tabletop simulator version of the yeah. game. Um, so I'm glad that it's a that it's a good mod, and I'm glad that the line of sight tools in there are good. Yeah, that that's the kind me. of thing with this. There's not a lot of I'm, yes, there's the the normal stuff with tabletop simulator, but it's not. I, I think this would play really well on tabletop yeah. simulator. But I I mean going back to the time thing though, like you can get a game in in sixty to ninety minutes. Mm-hmm. Once you understand setup faster, once you understand what the people do, once you understand the rules, and you've got several plays in, you can play this in 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah. And that puts it in a really special category because I the, the like level of enjoyment I get out of this game is on par with those big box yeah. experiences for me, but I could play it in you know half to a third to a fourth of the time. Yeah. So that, that, that's, that, that's really impressive to me. And the fact that Mythic has made this first-person tactical shooter into a skirmish game that works as well as it does, mm-hmm. I think is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, good victory on your rematch. Thank you. So, I think you know maybe it says something that once we both know the rules, you win. Um, maybe that's you know. Tip of the hat to you. (laughs) Enter Allison. (laughs) Allison comes into play and wipes the floor with both of us. Yeah, most Um, likely. How how did Jared do when he was playing? He did good. I we. Jared is Daniel's eleven year old son. He's eleven. He picked it up super fast. But I pretty much, the first couple rounds, told him here, why don't you do this? Why don't you come through? And we played the normal setup. So I said, come through this window. If you do that, you'll come up behind me. You can do this. So I kind of walked him through. And then he started making his decisions, and it was a lot of, like, you can do that, <laughs> but I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> and you can do that, too, but I'm going to shoot you back. <laughs> so it was a it was a lot of conversation that just, it was it was. But that's fun. cool, though. That, I mean, like, yeah, and he picked up you, on You would do that with someone who's not an 11-year-old. Right. You would do that with an adult. If an adult yeah. likes it, well, you know, you, you come into a game like this, and you're like, yeah, they're at seven hundred. Oh, they're Oh, they're going to hit a million. I have no doubt. I have no doubt that they're going to hit a million dollars. Yeah. Um, I mean, they had, prior to launch, they had more than like twelve or 13,000 followers on Kickstarter of people who were monitoring the campaign. So, um, and you know, I know that I, there are over 5,000 backers right now. Where, where, where is it at on backers? Let me go back. So yeah, over 5,000 backers. Yeah. Um, you know, 700, over 700,000. Um... Yeah, 722 with eight days to go. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, I, the, I think they're going to hit a million. Um, it's only been on for two days. Um, so the middle of the campaign may be a little bit slower in terms of money, but yeah. the end of the campaign is all the FOMO people that haven't backed yet are going to back at some level. Yeah. Um, 
I, I hate it too. I mean, I, we we could have a completely different discussion about about FOMO and Kickstarter and all that stuff. I don't like it, but um, I I agree with you, Cal. I think they're going to hit a million. Yeah. Um, so and I'm going to be I'm going to be happily looking at daily unlocks the whole time. There you go. Alrighty, I think. Yeah, I'm about to end yeah. the stream. I'm back here like yeah. yawning, going, come on. Come all right, well, hey, thanks yeah. so much for watching, guys. I thank appreciate you, it. Kyle and all the other people who have been watching, thank you so much for sticking with it and, uh, you know, looking at our ugly mugs while we shoot each other. Luckily, it was mostly top down, so. <laughs> it was mostly top down. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, everyone, have a great night, and we will see have you next time. Have a good one, time. guys. See ya.